Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and today we're going to be reviewing on Quick Kits the new Ming M1A2 Abrams with a Tusk 1 and Tusk 2 as well as the new D9R Caterpillar uh, Dobie with the slat armor also from Ming. So let's take a look inside. <laughs> Okay, the first kit we're going to look at is the Ming D9R Armored Bulldozer with Slat Armor. Uh, it's, it's done up in the by the Israelis. Ming did this original kit a couple years back, and now they're redoing it with all the Slat Armor on it, which makes it really nice. This one has metal hydraulic cylinder rods, uh, workable tracks, complete cab interior, which is really nice, and they also give you two types of glass. The uh, the bluish toned one which gives it the effect of the armored bulletproof glass. It has some photo etch inside of it. The kit retails in the United States for about $110 so it's not a very cheap kit but if you're looking for something that is, looks really really impressive on a build uh, this is the one you want to get and of course you can, you'll be able to find them in the United States for in the $80 range, $80 to $90 range so let's take a look inside. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at are going to be the individual tracks. And even though they are individual, this shouldn't scare you that much because these are actually go together pretty easily. You have just a, an A and B side. In fact, if you've noticed carefully right here, there's four little bumps on it and they correspond to the four little dents inside here. So you glue those on, snap the two pieces together, and then the tracks are completely workable after you're done with it. Okay, let's take a look at some of the uh, the more intricate pieces on the original kit. Uh, this is for the, the sides where that's going to hook up to the, the blade. Uh, you can just see how super detailed all of this area is in here. Very nicely done. We also have the blade itself and the guard up on top here. That's all nicely done as well. Like I said, there's a lot of parts in this kit, but if you're willing to take the time with it, it builds up very, very nicely. Okay, before we look at the rest of the kit, we're going to look at the uh, couple of sprues that make this one different from the original. This is some of the slat armor that Ming has included in the kit. It's very, very precisely molded and very, very thin. And right down to the point where you can actually see the actual metal protruding through the other side on the real vehicle, which a lot of companies would have just left that flat, so it's very nicely done. A couple of little things. There is a little bit, a tiny bit of flash, and that's probably just because it's such a fine piece right there, but it should clean up easily with a little sanding stick in between it. I'll show you some of those different things. And then this is the other piece of the slat armor. Looks really nice too, with all the extra brackets. Uh, this kit is going to be quite a bit of work because there's a lot of parts on it, but as you've seen on the other video, when the model is built up, it really is a, uh, a beautiful kit. Okay, the next kit we're going to take a look at is Ming's M1A2 Abrams, the Tusk 1 slash Tusk 2 edition. Uh, this kit retails for about $90 in the United States, and there again, you can get it in the 70s. 
the kit has quite a few parts and some nice detail to it. So let's, for the first thing, take a look at are the tracks. Now this, this is one sprue of four for the tracks, so there is a lot, a lot of parts for the uh, tracks on this kit. And just like the Ryefield model, one that we reviewed last week, um, individual pads, all the horns have to be cut off and individually put on, and then the connectors here. Now they do give you a jig, and they will be workable once you're done, but this is going to be a lot, a lot of work for someone who's just starting out in modeling, or even if someone's been in it for a long time quite a bit right there. Next thing we're going to look at is the, the chassis itself. It's a bathtub style chassis. It has the sponsons already molded right into it so that's a nice feature. Keeps it nice and square. Nice super detail all on sides of that. Uh, after that we're going to look at is the some of the side armor for the Tusk 1 version and you get the underbelly special armor plus all the block arm, armor on the side here. And that's all been molded very, very nicely. The machine gun is nice too, but not as nice as the uh, Rifle model one. This one you might have to hollow out a little bit or actually just get a metal barrel for it. Now, one of the other pieces here is the cupolas that they've given you. They actually give you two types of cupola in this kit. You can see some of the different parts on that. And you can see a little bit right here, and I'll actually show you more on the other parts. They actually have molded the anti-skid on the entire model as well. And you can notice it a lot more when you take a look at the turret itself. And you can see how it has a dull effect right there. And that's from the anti-skid that's been put on it. And that's also true of the, the body itself. Uh, the turret, or excuse me, the uh, barrel is molded in two pieces with a single round piece up front for the end of it. So this is going to require quite a bit of sanding to get that seam out of the middle there. But might have to try to go get a resin aftermarket barrel if that bothers you too much on it. Okay, in this next grouping of sprues, you'll get to see the, uh, looks like roof tile type armor. This is for the Tusk 2, and that actually actually goes over the block armor that is part of the Tusk 1, so it's some extra stuff. All of this has been molded very precisely. Nice looking. You've got some of the parts here for, oops, for the basket. How Ming molded all of this stuff. This looks really nice too right here. Already formed up as one piece. And they gave it some nice protection around it too. So it should hold up pretty well. And when it comes to the suspension arms. Now on the Ryfield model kit. It did have the torsion bar suspension. But you had to actually glue that all up. So this is actually molded as one piece on the, the Ming kit. Which will make it a little little stronger I believe when you actually put it together and I think because the tracks are workable on this kit the reason they all giving you the the torsion bar suspension is to keep the tracks from lining up properly and the last sprue we're gonna look at in this is some of the louvers and you can see how they've they mold them all through all in on it's a, it's a beautiful kit lots and lots of parts so if you're looking for a long time project this will be certainly fit the bill on that tracks look a little difficult but I think it's nothing impossible, just going to be very time consuming on it. Okay, and the last thing we're going to look at is Ming's photo etch that comes with the kit. It too is very, very nicely molded. In fact, you can see some of the extra. Sorry about the glare. Very nice. And then, of course, the decal sheets. The decals actually look very, very similar to the ones that came in the uh, Ryfield model kit. Uh, coming up soon, too, I have a friend of mine who was a captain in the Army, and he's going to give us a com and actually commanded uh, M1 Abrams tanks. He's going to give us a complete breakdown on all three different kits combined between the Ming, the Ryefield, and even the Tamiya model. We won't actually be able to do a complete build on all of them right away, but he will compare all three of them based on you know accuracy and tell you some of that stuff. So look forward to that in the near future. So thank you for watching and stay tuned because we have more models coming.